my screen? Yes, if you would like to. Okay. Also be recorded and it'll be available on our CAST YouTube website. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Lydia. Hello everyone, welcome. I'm really excited to be here and to work with you. Um, so my presentation is gonna be give and take about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna have a 15 minutes of Q and A. But as you all are coming in, I'm curious. I'd like to see um, <clears throat> where, <clears throat> where you are joining us from. Well, I know you're here, but where are you? Or did you move to come to San Diego? Um, or do you live in San Diego? Or are you from San Diego? And what is something that you're looking forward to now that you're gonna be at UCSD? If you can type that in for me in the chat. So maybe if you want to share something in the chat with me that what is something that you're looking forward to now that you're at UCSD, whether it's to walk to the glider port, to if you can type it in the chat, please. If it's a meal you're looking forward to. They're letting us know the chat is disabled. So let's see. Let me see what's going on here. That's probably why we're not getting oh, okay. <laughs> any submissions. So they're saying, yeah, they're letting us know the chat is disabled. Um, Lydia, on your end, do you see in the chat on the chat box um, if you're able to enable that? Let me see. There's like a little arrow. Okay. I think it should say everyone now. Okay. Let's try that one more time. All right. Sorry about that. Oh, okay, awesome, Calexico, that's great. Socializing and becoming more independent, definitely. Those are something that we're, all, that it's something exciting, right? Meeting friends, doing things on your own. Okay, we have somebody from LA. The food, yeah, there's a lot of food options. So that's really also exciting. Livermore, excited about meeting new people. Absolutely, I am from San Diego. Um, and looking forward to being in the dorms and meeting new people. That's always so exciting. San Diego bound also. I'm looking forward to moving day. That's so exciting. San Diego, meeting new people. Okay, I love the excitement, but we're all, okay, we are thinking independence. We wanna make friends, um, moving in. Okay, a lot of San Diego, Torrance. Oh, right, I love this, so much excitement. I'm from San Diego. Okay. Yeah, a lot of being independent. This is great. Well, you're gonna get a lot of that in college and I'm particularly excited for you that you're excited to meet new people because um, that's gonna be very helpful. And um, I feel that's one of, that's gonna be like a, something that's gonna help you a lot, you know, when you have your friends and when you're meeting people to get through the harder challenges. All right, well, Thank you for sharing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get moving to the next part of our slide. All right. So I am here to um, kind of represent all the colleges today. Um, as you know, there's seven colleges. Um, I'm gonna start with a little bit about myself. My name is Lydia Ramirez. I am one of the senior counselors at ERC academic advising. Um, I am first gen. I was born in Mexico City. I lived there till I was eight. I go back often. And then I moved to San Diego. I'm a first gen student. Well, I was first gen alumni now myself, but not alumni from UCSD. I attended the University of San Diego for my undergrad. And I attended Point Loma Nazarene for my master's. Um, 
So what I also want to share with you, you know, I want to talk about um, the different colleges, what we do, uh, tell you a little bit more about what you can expect from your college advisor, um, how to connect with us before fall, um, and just go over some general questions and some Q&A at the end. All right, everyone, well, welcome. So again, I just want to clarify that I'm representing all the colleges. So if you're not in ERC, we may not see each other, but I'm going to show you who is your contact, who is your point of contact. Okay, so you're probably wondering, right, how am I going to navigate at UCSD? Well, UCSD is a decentralized advising system where you're going to have, um, you're going to be in touch with many different offices, right? So for example, you have your college advisor, which would be me, or depending on who you're working at the other colleges. So we basically oversee, call, you know, the general education requirements, university requirements, um, but we're going to be your main point of contact at UCSD and typically your first stop. So if you don't know where to go or how to go about things, I encourage you to start with your college advisor and we'll refer you to the appropriate person or office. Um, the reason why we say start with us is because we kind of look at the bigger picture and we're gonna tell you, okay, you know, the expertise of the financial aid office is needed, the expertise of residential life, or we can, show you some resources that maybe you don't know about, but it's very important that you, you know, connect with us. So as you know, to graduate, you're gonna need to complete major requirements, GE requirements, university requirements, and we'll go over that with you. And like I said, we may not know the answer, but we'll give you the best referral. Um, how about your major advisors? So every major, in every major, you're also going to have a major department advisor, and they're going to help you with planning for your major requirements. So if you're wondering, hey, um, I don't know, should I do another major within the major department? So for example, if you're thinking, hey, I have a, I'm not sure if I should get a bachelor's in psychology or should I get a, a bachelor's of arts or bachelor's of science, they can kind of go over that with you and specific major requirements. Um, they can also help you with research or alumni information within your major, um, and they're going to help you in terms of academic planning. Um, they're going to be your main instructor of your major, but the college, we kind of put the main, the final puzzle piece at the end, and that's because a lot of the major courses are not offered all the time, so we kind of you know, we want to make sure that we look at the big picture, like I said earlier. And also on campus, you're also going to find other offices, right? Career services. So for example, if you're thinking, hey, I want to get an internship, or how do I work on my resume? How do I update my LinkedIn? Well, career services is going to be a great resource for that, or they're going to say, hey, people are visiting from um, this industry, they're looking, they're going to give a workshop or things like that. Um, you know, you also are going to have other offices like the financial aid office, um, the international center. There's so many offices, right? All right. Let me go to the next slide. Um, oops. So you're probably wondering, well, I'm a little confused. You're wondering, I have a college advisor and a major advisor, why? Okay, so I'm kind of gonna go over that with you. So for example, your major advisors, they're gonna help you to understand and plan your major requirements and it's very specific. So it's important that you connect with them. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you're gonna be able to learn about different majors within the department. Um, they're going to have different department policies and procedures. So if you're thinking, hey, I want to petition a certain cause that I want to take at a community college, what are my options? Um, they're going to let you know if you have any questions regarding prereqs or if there's courses that you need to take before taking certain courses. You know, if they if you want to do research within the department, if you want a specific internship. Um, in that field, um, TA opportunities, and they can talk to you about 
graduate professional schools options in the department they may offer. That doesn't mean you can't talk to us about it, but it's more specific things. So say if you're like, hey, I want to know what do I need to do to better prepare for the master's once the deadline, things like that. And then, right, your college advisors who are wondering, okay, this is confusing. Um, so we're basically here again for the bigger picture. We're gonna help you plan for your GE requirements, your university requirements. If you're wondering, hey, well, I wanna drop with a W, what are the policies? Or I'm going through something personal, what are my options? It's important that you connect with us early on so we can explain your options to you. So don't be afraid. Um, and like I said earlier, we're gonna help you connect with resources that can help you reach your goals or maybe tools, right? If you're saying, hey, I'm really stressed, I might say, okay, what's going on? And you know, we'll go over, um, we'll go over your options. We're gonna help you with your educational goals, a lot of planning, a lot of long-term planning. Um, you know, if you're confused, well, I don't know if this is the right major for me, what should I do? And you know, life is going to happen it's inevitable and i can't stress that enough you have to connect with us so that we can help you with a plan all right so um you're probably wondering hey so what's the requirement of this you know my scholarship so we typically recommend that you meet with your college advisor at least one per once per quarter in your first year um, just so that you're also aware, okay, aside from meeting your requirement of your scholarship, so that you understand what is expected of you in terms of, hey, how do I meet those requirements? Am I doing a good job? What should I be thinking about? What should I be doing? What classes should I be taking? Because it's only going to be, you know, um, for your benefit. And in terms of how can I meet the requirement? Is it by making an appointment? Is it by sending in a VAC? That's gonna be that's gonna be different at every college. So make sure that you get clarification with your college, your CAS college liaison. Um, also, I want to express enough. You want to make sure that you're reading your VAC um, and you check your UCSD email because that's where you'll be hearing from us in the universities. So you can access the, you can contact the academic advisors. Um, I believe it's August 9th by going to that.ucsd.edu. And you should be able to ask us questions directly electronically in regards to your fall quarter schedule. And you're also gonna be receiving an enrollment guidance where it's a little bit general, but it's enough to ask you questions where you can select your courses. But if you need further clarification, you know, like I said, you can reach out on the back. Um, and I can't express this enough. Um, for some of you that have to do the academic background, it'll vary for college. Just make sure if it is a requirement, you would already know about it by now, that you do it by the deadline. Um, and if you haven't done it, just make sure that you do it because that's gonna help us um, help you provide you the right resources. All right, okay, so remember that I said that I may not be your liaison and I'm here representing all seven colleges. Well, these are all the liaisons at UCST. So if you're at Ravel College, um, Arnell is your um, CASP liaison, Carla at Muir, Michael at Marshall, Amato at Warren, myself at ERC, Aaron at Sixth College, and Stephanie at Seventh College. Um, some colleges, again, like each college works differently where they might say, hey, you need to meet with a specific liaison. And some colleges may say, you can meet with any of us. But if, for example, if you feel more comfortable approaching us because you already have a familiar face, Absolutely, you're more than welcome to. So um, sometimes you may not also meet with the CASP college liaison, um, but you can, like I said, absolutely meet with them. And then the wait might be a little longer, but um, we can certainly get you scheduled with, you know, your college liaison. Okay, let me move to the next slide. All right, well, um, 
as you know, the fall quarter is just around the corner. It's just around the corner. Um, so just make sure that you pay attention to these important deadlines. So you should be able to view your enrollment time on August 1st. Please set up an alarm. Um, so that way that day, at least you can log in and see, okay, this is the time where I'm gonna be able to enroll for courses. And at that point, you also wanna set another alarm, right? Because at that point, you already wanna be ready. You already looked at the course scheduling and you're ready to go so that when your time hits, all you have to do is just enroll. Again, I wanna re remind you, complete compass slash pre-orientation, it's due July 29th. You have to register for orientation, which the deadline is also on July 29th. Um, your enrollment guidance, that's gonna be available on August 7th. So um, if you also I wanna express, if you already mailed like your transcripts, if you already mailed everything that was required by the Ju July deadline, you should be able to see your degree audit updated by mid-August. Um, so again, pay attention to this. The enrollment guidance is going to be important in helping you because um, that's where we tell you, okay, this is if you're thinking about this path or if you're thinking about this path, this is what you should enroll in. Um, again, the VAC opens on August 7th, so you can communicate with us at that time. And the new student enrollment begins um, August 18th for first years. Um, but again, you're going to be able to view your enrollment time on August 1st to see what day starting August 18th you're able to enroll. Um, so again, if you want to, you know, take a picture of this with your cell phone, um, just so that you're aware of these deadlines coming up. So I'll give you like a couple seconds and then I'll move on to the next part. All right, well, um, I wanna make sure I dedicate plenty of time to answer your questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then um, maybe I can answer some questions on the Q&A. So this is your chance, are you, are you wondering if students? So they're gonna have, um, they're gonna have different requirements. So, wait a minute. Okay, this brought me to the wrong, but let's try current students. Hold on, I should probably pick a major, undergraduate majors. So let's just say mechanical and aerospace engineering. Um, major requirements. Hold on. Let me see, let me try. Um, I don't know why. Sorry, I do this often and I can't find a, a specific example. So let's do computer science. Academic advising, let's see, um, undergraduate. Let's try undergraduate. Um, Okay, so then here it tells you more about the admissions to CSE. Um, so it's gonna vary, right? They're telling you review the eligibility requirements, determine which quarter you'd be able to apply, um, but they kind of go over what you would need to take and they kind of go over the steps here and your eligibility to submit an application. So, you know, they're telling you you must have completed CSC 8B, um, CSC 12, and they want you to have completed this before 
you know, you apply by a certain time. So to answer your question, how and when, you kind of have to start looking at the requirements, start taking the requirements, and it'll vary per major. But once you meet the eligibility courses and you apply by the deadline, you should be able to apply for that. Um, all right, I took the AWP, but I didn't pass it, but I did English 101 in high school. Is my ELWR still completed? Okay, so I'm gonna share my, sc my screen again. I would advise for you to connect with the ELWR office, but there's different ways that you can meet um, the ELWR requirement. Um, so how do I meet the ELWR requirement? Score of 30 or higher in the SAT, score 63 or ACT, score of 680 or higher in the SAT. Um, and they kind of tell you, okay, by taking the AP exam or an IB, however, you know, if I don't have any of those, um, can I take an, an exam? You can take um, an exam for the ELWR. So I know you were asking, I did English 101, does that fulfill my ELWR? I don't believe so because these are the ways in high school how you could have met it. Um, so at that point, um, you have to take the exam um, for the ELWR, whether it'll be through placement, you know, through the writing placement or, um, or the other options. So definitely I'm gonna share this with you so you can kind of read over that and I'm gonna post it on the chat. Um, and you can contact the ELWR office specifically for your um, for that case. All right, let me stop sharing. What does it mean to be sophomore standing? So every time you complete a certain amount of units, then you know you'd either be sophomore standing, junior standing, sophomore standing doesn't really give you um, a specific benefit other than, okay, I have more units, I can enroll in more units. When you reach junior standing, then you can take upper division courses. Um, all right. I've emailed ELWR, but they never replied to me. Um, definitely, they will communicate with you. Um, you know, give them a little bit of time. I think right now it's a busy time. You know, a lot of questions are coming in, but definitely that will be your best point of resource, especially if you're thinking, hey, I wanna move quick. I thought I sent this in. Um, so at least it's in their radar. Okay, where and how do I take it? Okay, I believe I selected yes for taking a chemistry placement exam. Where and how do I take it? Okay. Let me share that with you. And we're gonna also be sending you this in the enrollment guidance. Um, in the enrollment guidance, we're gonna say, okay, this is what you, know, you should be doing. This is where you can take um, the placement exams and whatnot. So let me put this on the chat. Lydia, so, as you're putting that in the chat, I don't mean to um, cut you off. I just want to let folks know, I know, you know, we're going until 1115. It sounds like some folks still have questions. If you're available um, and can stay for a little bit longer, that'd be great. Um, but I will say as questions come, please drop them in the Q&A that does provide a faster response. But for anybody who no longer has questions, um, just wanting to let you all know that we do have an hour lunch break. Um, we will be connecting again at 1215. You will be connecting for your group activities. Um, so if you uh, do have a summer intern, your summer intern um, has already sent that group activity link. If you are unsure uh, what we may be talking about, please go ahead and drop that um, in the chat if you need some assistance for your summer intern uh, link, but just wanting to make that, that time check as well. And thank you so much, Lydia. Like I mentioned, if you have some time and you wanna stick around for some questions, that'd be great. We'll stick around as well. Yeah, I can stick around for a couple of minutes. 
Um, okay, next question. How do we know whether or not UCSD received their AP scores? Yeah, definitely. So if you turn everything in by the July deadline in mid-August, it should be updated on your record. So you should be able to see it on your academic history. Um, if you check right now, chances are that it hasn't been updated because they're working on it. Um, but by mid-August, you should be able to see it on your academic history. All right, can I still take the math placement exam? Um, you should be able to. I'm gonna share the math testing link, okay? If it says sophomore standing, does that mean the units there are GEs and major, and major requirements or just units in general, even if they don't count towards graduation? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Absolutely, so if it says sophomore standing, it doesn't matter, the system is not thinking, oh, you're sophomore standing because you've only taken classes for your major or for your GEs, no. The way the system reads it is your overall unit. So if you're already sophomore standing, it's because you probably brought in a lot of APs or um, brought in a lot of APs or you took a lot of courses at the community college, um, but it doesn't really identify if it's towards your majors or not. It's just general units that will count towards graduation. 